What's going on, fellow sports fans? Welcome to an exciting part of the year. We got the uh, NBA draft coming up. We have the NBA playoffs. Football's always on my mind, and baseball season's running along. Uh, in case I forget to say it, Aaron Judge is absolutely demolishing baseballs. Uh, you know, LeBron James should have won MVP every year for his like entire career because people forgot how amazing he was. I thought Shohei Otani was about to have a, a little run like that because he's an above average pitcher, a well above average pitcher, and a well above average hitter. Say, at worst, a B plus at both. A B plus at both is still better than an A plus plus like Mike Trout. Like, it's well known fact Otani is more valuable than Trout because he pitches and hits. Last year, he hit like 46 home runs, stole like 20 bases, and racked up a ton of strikeouts. So it looked like he was going to win MVP every year. Well, lo and behold, Aaron Judge is now playing center field, a more valuable position, doing pretty well in the pressure of New York and absolutely crushing baseballs. So props to Judge. Good for him for doing that. Anyways, what I'm really here to talk about is those Warriors. The Warriors are looking absolutely fire. If you look at their starting lineup, you got Curry, Hall of Famer, Thompson, possible Hall of Famer, Wiggins, former number one overall pick. They call him two-way Wiggs. He's been doing a, uh, as good a job as possible on Luka. I know Luka is an absolute animal, but that's, you know, we'll, we'll let that slide. Dre at the four, who's always a defensive player of the year candidate, and Kevon Looney, who um, wouldn't have been that great in the 80s, but now the centers are getting smaller and smaller. Dude's like 6'11 and moves pretty well. So he can shift, he can guard people at the perimeter for a second. He hit a deep pull up two the other day. So he's mobile, he's not soft, he's he does his job, and he doesn't like require the ball. You know, Chris Dapps Porzingis is much better than him. He could be on these Mavericks right now, except he's a diva. I love Chris Dapps, but he was demanding that it was him and Luca as opposed to Luca's team and Chris Dapps stands in the corner and shoots threes which is what happened to Kevin Love when he played with LeBron. And it's tough, uh, especially for Love, who was a great rebounder and is actually sacrificing that. But Chris Stapps is more of a guard-type player who wants to just shoot threes. If he was on this team right now, the way it's playing, with Luka isolating, driving, and dishing to people to hit threes, he would be an absolute stud because he can actually hit threes. And there is absolutely, so I mentioned the Warriors' starting lineup. They also have Kaminga, who's a defensive dynamo, Otto Porter, former top pick, and most importantly, the third splash bro, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole has been driving to the lane, and Maxi Kleba, Dorian Finney-Smith, um, Davis Bertons, and Dwight Powell have offered absolutely zero rim protection. So bring in Chris Dapps, who's by all means like, like Looney, not a firm guy, not someone who would have killed in the 80s, but in today's game, he's seven foot three and can block shots. He averages 1.9 blocks for his entire career. He averages like 19.8 points a game. So that is the kind of dude who these Mavericks are solely lacking. The trade was for Bertans and Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie doesn't impact the game nearly as much as Chris Stapps, especially with Jalen Brunson becoming a star. So the offense runs through Luka, and when he's not in, it goes through Brunson. So essentially, Dinwiddie is like a third guard, which is not nearly as important as Chris Stapps would be. So, uh, for, but for the... Uh, for them to be up 19 on the Warriors shows a testament to just how greedy this team is. I mentioned Finney Smith. That dude is like their Draymond. He's their glue. Uh, you see him crashing the boards all the time, always playing. I remember a couple games when people were injured, when Luka and, and Brunson were injured at the points in the year. He was playing like 45 minutes a game. Dude's an absolute grinder. I'm glad he signed up to play with them. Uh, that was actually happened right after they traded Porzingis. They gave him a five-year deal. So I love that for him. But uh, the fact that they are all in on the three ball is, you know, that's what the NBA does. You you help on Luka, someone's open for three. So that makes sense. They got their three and Ds on the wings in Bullock and DFS, but they need a three and D center. They need a center who doesn't have to be knocked down like Brooke Lopez, just someone who can hit a corner three if needed. Like P.J. Tucker would be amazing for them. He can be a small ball five. Uh, he knocks down the corner three, doesn't need the ball, plays his role, but again, not an interior defender. They do need someone to have some sort of rim protection. Like a Brook Lopez would be nice for them. I know he's not available because he's on the Bucks. There has to be someone out there, like on the Thunder, someone who doesn't care about their center. Because if they want to compete, they really do need a 3 and D center. Um, and it, as far as the, the Heat Celtics series, crazy how well the, the Heat did last game. You know, Bam out of bio, just firing all cylinders from the start. Uh, you know, you, you love to see that. I, uh, the Celtics Warriors, I, I think they're both the most complete teams. 
So that's, you know, would be the most fun series. But what I really want to see is the Heat and the Mavericks. I'm always into that underdog. I know you say that the Heat have uh, Bam, Lowry, and Jimmy Butler, but no one thinks of that as a star power in terms of, like, Steph, Clay, Dre, and Wiggins. Um, Jimmy Butler has been underrated his entire career. When he was on the Bulls at first with Thibodeau, dude was playing, like, 45 minutes a game. LeBron said he was, like, everyone acknowledged he was the best defender to guard LeBron. Uh, there was points where it was like Jimmy Butler and Paul George were both seen as like the the person who could be the LeBron stopper. Unfortunately, neither one of their careers really took off like it was supposed to. But Jimmy Butler is absolutely killing in these playoffs. So I think a ring would be really good for him. And I've just always liked the way he plays. But again, uh, the Warriors-Celtics would be the best series. Uh, you know, the matchups are great. Smart on Curry is awesome. Jalen Green, uh, sorry, Jalen Brown on um, Clay. And then we got Jason Tatum on Wiggins is a great one. Um, and then I guess Grant Williams at the four against Dre is not fun, but it's solid. Those are grinders. And then uh, Horford and Looney. And Horford's been on HGH, absolutely mossing fools. That dunk on Giannis was absolutely monstrous. And then um, I dogged my boy. Uh, Horford at the four and the Time Lord, Rob Williams at the five. I've always loved that dude. Uh, I'm a New Yorker, so it pains me to see how good these Celtics, this, this Celtics team has been built. Um, that was an absolutely terrific draft pick. He was like a top 10 talent who went like late 20s because of character concerns. But dude plays with the high motor. Um, so yeah, these, these playoffs have been really exciting. I'm really looking forward to game three. I think uh, the Mavs are going to take one of the next two at home and then end up losing uh, game five back in California. So I think it goes 4-1 uh, Warriors. And then um, I do think the Celtics are going to pull it out. And then I think um, in the finals, I think the Warriors are going to take the Celtics down. I know Marcus Smart's a good defender, but you can't defend Curry. So they're like best defensive piece really is going to be neutralized by Curry just shooting from wherever the hell he wants to. And then um, the, the Celtics just don't have the offensive firepower to keep up with the Warriors. So it's been a fun playoffs. Looking forward to more. And uh, I know I'm from Cali, but go, go Mavericks tonight. I love the underdog and Luka is the homie. Uh, I can't believe he wasn't the first overall pick. No offense to DeAndre Ayton, but uh, the way the NBA is transitioning with guards being everything, Luca is a six-seven point guard who was listed at six-eight at the time. So no one should have ever passed on that man. He's been a star since he was fifteen. He was a clear number one overall pick. Uh, and then Marvin Bagley is even worse. I get Ayton; he was supposed to be great, but Marvin Bagley at two is absolutely blasphemous. So go show him why they're wrong, Luca. Kill it, buddy.